In one of the previous labs, I did a reliable e IBGP connectivity between R1 and R2 using loopbacks. I advertised loopbacks into OSPF uh, to establish connectivity between them and the BGP session was established between those loopbacks. I'm going to try to repeat the same thing between R6 and Internet 3, but the, the difference here is that the session is not IBGP, but it is eBGP. What's the difference? So the first difference is that I cannot usually run the dynamic routing protocol to exchange loopback information between R6 and the Internet 3. The static route is the option here. So let's start with that maybe configuration. So my loopback on R6 that is going to be used, loopback 0, address is all 6. On Internet 3, same loopback 0 has address all 15. So first I need to establish the static route between those loopbacks. IP route uh, 6666, the mask is slash 32, the next hop is 10130.6, but there's an, that's disconnectivity here. And there's another one connection between those using 31 link. So I'm gonna add 31 here as well. So the next hub is 31.6. Now at this point, uh, if I do trace, since my outgoing interface is going to be directly connected to R6 and the load bug is directly connected to R6, my source IP 32.5.4 and 31.5.4 should reach this loop back. So trace 6.6.6.6 and both paths are now being utilized. The load balancing is happening here. I'm going to repeat my process on R6 now real quick. So the address of the loop bug is all 15s and mask slash 32, the 10, 1, 30, 2, 5, 4, and the same with 31, 2, 5, 4. So that is going to be my ping 15, 15, 15, 15 source loop bug 0. Yeah, there is a reachability connectivity between those two loopbacks. So now on to the BGP connectivity that, that I did. It's going to be similar to previous one. So let's go here on our 6 conf t router BGP. It's 60 here. My neighbor is all 15s. Uh, remote AS is 300. And I need to update my session off of the loopback 0. And I'll need to do the same thing on Internet 3. So let's clear the terminal here real quick. Conf T router BGP 300. My neighbor is 06. Remote AS is 60. And I need to source my packet off of the loopbacks. So the first problem is solved, but the BGP is never going to be established. Now, why is that? Let's look at the, my picture here. I have R1, IBGP session, and eBGP session in Internet 1. Let's see what the difference is here in terms of TTL or time to live field. So every time we send the packets, we use TTL field, right? So let's go back to R1 and see what the neighbors are. Show IP BGP summary. And there are two neighbors. So let's look at them in more detail. Show IP BGP neighbor. And 2.2.2.3, that's my IBGP. And I'm going to display only TTL field. What it says that the minimum incoming TTL is zero, so if I receive TTL zero, that's fine, I can still consider that. But the outgoing TTL field is 255 hops. Now, every time the packet crosses the router, the router it decrements the TTL by one. If it reaches number zero, the router cannot forward the packet any further because that means the TTL expired. So zero is kind of like a magic number. I, if I see TTL zero, I cannot forward this any further. Now, what is going to be the same thing for my other neighbor, which is 10.1.10.254? That's eBGP connectivity. The incoming minimum incoming TTL is also zero, but outgoing TTL is by default number one. So that is the problem in my reliable eBGP connectivity here. Consider this. When the loopback is sending packet from R6, address 6666 towards the loopback 15, 15, 15, 15. 
So packet comes into the router 6, TTL is 1 by default, as shown here for eBGP session. So R6 decrements this by 1 and now the packet TTL is 0. Router 4 cannot forward this packet any further. And the same applies obviously on Internet 3 when we source the packet of a 15, 15, 15, 15. Comes to the router, it TTL is 1. Router takes the TTL decremented by 1, now it's 0. I cannot for forward this any further. So we need to increase the for eBGP sessions the TTL to a number of hops that is valid for our connectivity. Maximum is to 55, it will always work. But I want to be uh, more on the secure side and I will use exactly the number of hops here. I know what this uh, layout is so I can do that. Now why is that difference? Because it's for our protection. We don't want to have anyone, rogue router maybe, trying to establish connectivity with us using BGP all of the internet. Now when we have this extra protection number of hops, the packet will never reach us. It will never be uh, 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 capable of you know, trying to uh, establish the session with us if they don't know what the TTL number is for eBGB connectivity. If that's not enough, there's another protection, we'll talk about that later. But for now, let's make it work though. So I need to calculate how many numbers. So if the TTL comes in here, is going to be decremented by one, that's one decre decrement goes out another decrement before it reaches loopbacks on loopback on internet three so two hops my ttl the the minimum value needs to be two hops so let's make this work now so i still don't see any relationship here i'm going to say for this name neighbor so what i'm going to say for this neighbor is that you know ebgp multi-hop and if I have question mark, if I hit enter, it's going to be maximum value 255. I know the number of hops is two, so I'll go for two on both ends. I'm going to jump over here. I'm going to say same thing here for my neighbor six EBGP. Oh, it was already established because the R6 became a client, but we, we are never guaranteed it's going to be the first. So we should also consistently put this over here. So now it's working. The problem with the eBGP is the default TTL is one, and if we need to cross more than one router using eBGP, we need to increment the number of hops using eBGP multi-hop command.